you know, I don't really have a primary. I kind of go back and forth between painting and sculpting. Most of the time it's either one or the other, but sometimes I'll have like, I have a bust that I've painted over there. You know, I might paint small areas, but for the most part it's glazed sculptures and then paintings on wood. I feel like I've always just had an urge to make things. Even, you know, when I was young, I liked to glue rocks together and make creatures out of rocks. I drove my mom crazy because I never wanted to throw any of the boxes away from our fast food and I'd make Kleenex boxes or, you know, money banks or whatever out of the boxes. And so I think I've just always liked repurposing or making things. I was able to take classes at Fort Boise in pottery and ceramic sculpture, which really opened up that whole love of, of clay for me, which I hadn't discovered until I was 29, I think. You know, having that facility has been great. Being around all the other outstanding potters that are down there was inspiring. Um, and then I was lucky enough to, to meet a person, Artie Tate, who really helped me get into the galleries um, in Boise. And so I, I felt so lucky that you know, those doors opened up for me. And then the, the public art opportunities that I've had too are opportunities I don't know that a lot of people have where they live. And I think that um, that's another real benefit of being here in Boise is the vibrant public art scene. Most recently I was reading a taxidermy book and I saw somebody had made a double-headed sheep or something out of uh, taxidermy. And so that inspired me to make a double-headed goat out of clay. Something that's been inspiring me a lot lately is movable art. So kinetic sculptures, uh, most often they're made out of wood, but I've been trying to make some kind of movable sculptures out of clay. And then also using incorporating wood and paint as well with that. I'll see something and I'll see one element that I think, I bet I could make that one element. So then I try to reproduce that and then it turns into a, its own piece. For me, I'm lucky because it's a stronger drive for me than like watching TV. And so if I'm you know home alone, that's typically what I tend to do is try to make something. I'm really good at starting projects, not as good at finishing them. So sometimes I'm motivated by seeing all the things I've started and then I'm like, I really gotta finish that thing. So then I'll make time to make that happen. But that is definitely a challenge, especially when my career isn't an artistic career during the day. So it is something I have to carve out time for specifically, but um, it's just kind of a drive I have, I guess. It, it's hard to create when you have to like put everything away or if you don't even have room to put everything away every day and you're creating in your living space, it's definitely a challenge. So I think that being able to have a space is really huge. So art, I think, means that you're basically interpreting something. And I guess it goes back to, you know, what you find inspiration in. So for me, if I find inspiration in this one element of something that I've seen, I'm gonna, you know, I, I wanna try to interpret it. And I guess, I, I feel like that's what all of us are doing, you know, when they say that no artist is original. I think it's, it's true in a way, like, that we're all reinterpreting something that's already been interpreted before, but it's original in the way that we interpret it. So I guess that's what art means to me. And I also feel like it's something bigger, almost like speaking through you. You know, when you get inspired, it's coming from some other place that I'm not really sure where that is, but something is speaking to you and you're just driven to, to give that thing a voice. Even if you carve out, you know, a small chunk of time, and, and you know, ideally every day, but it might not even be every day, it might be every other day. You keep something within you alive that's gonna sustain you through all the other things you do. If it's parenting, if it's your day job, if it's, you know, whatever else. I think just being in touch with that creative side of yourself helps you be true to yourself and helps you feel better about everything else you're doing. I also think that it's a matter of building momentum. So even though it's easy to get discouraged, it's, you know, once you build that momentum, it just gets easier. And it is hard at times, like sometimes I'll look around and see all the stuff I've created just sitting here and I, and I think, why am I gonna make one more piece to end up in my basement or end up on my shelf? Then the next day someone says, oh, I saw this piece of yours, it's so great. And I think, okay, that's why I keep making it. it, it it's uh, to have conversations with people too. I guess I just feel really grateful to the teachers that I've had in my life, you know, traditional and non-traditional. Teachers at Fort Boise, the people that are down there working at Fort Boise, the students, um, and you know, the people that have mentored me, taken me under my wing, the people that have even like given me feedback on my stuff and, you know, commented on my website or, you know, that. I just, I'm so grateful for all that because that's what keeps me going.